How to Spend 24 Hours in Lisbon In this video, we will show you a sample one-day or 24-hour travel itinerary for visiting Lisbon. Lisbon is the capital city of Portugal. It's the country's largest city and the commercial, political, and tourist center. Throughout history, Portugal has experienced several catastrophic natural disasters. A devastating earthquake hit Lisbon killing as many as 50,000 people, on November 1, 1755. Following the earthquake, a massive tsunami hit the city furthering the damage. The city was virtually rebuilt from scratch following the widespread destruction. Now the city is one of the most vibrant and popular in Europe. In this video, I will provide a step-by-step -step plan to get around the most important and popular monuments, landmarks, and attractions. If you are only going to be in Lisbon for a day, you might be concerned about how much of the city you'll be able to experience. Let's get started. Transportation in Lisbon. The best way to get around the city is on foot and by public transport. Most of the destinations are within walking distance of one another. Your own two feet are a great way to see the sights, just keep in mind that climbing this city's hilly streets on foot can be quite the workout. For some destinations that are too far to walk, consider using buses, trams, the metro and elevators. Lisbon's bright yellow trams are certainly one of the most picturesque ways to get around the city. The most famous is Lisbon Tram 28. It's a great way to see the iconic neighborhoods and a practical means of public transportation. Tram 28 passes through Lisbon's famous districts such as Alfama, Baixa, Estrela and Graca. The city has three funiculars to help people climb the steep and long slopes of the city. Belém Tower Let's begin our journey at the Belém Tower. It is one of Lisbon's most striking monuments. Lisbon had experienced economic growth and was flourishing economically. With colonies in Brazil, parts of Africa, and Southeast Asia, Portugal was very wealthy. Hence, King Manuel deemed it necessary to improve the security of the city. In 1514, it was built as a defense structure. It has been well preserved and it is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is adorned with various carvings on the outside. Inside, there are beautiful elements of Manuline architecture along with many defense structures available for the public to view. The highlight of the Belém Tower is the open terrace at the top. It gives you a sweeping view of the waterfront, river, and surrounding neighborhood. Geronimo's Monastery Head down the street to Geronimo's Monastery. It is an impressive symbol of Portugal's power and wealth during the Age of Discovery. It was once inhabited by monks who gave guidance to sailors. Hence, it features elaborate sculptural details carved out of limestone. Due to its clever engineering, it only suffered slight damage from the earthquake and is well preserved to this day. It also contains the tomb of Vasco da Gama, the famous Portuguese explorer. While here, you should try Pastel de Bellum, an original pastry created by the ancient monks. Museum of Art, Architecture, and Technology Take a 10-minute walk to the Museum of Art, Architecture, and Technology. It is a cultural center not just for Lisbon but for Portugal in general. The Kunsthalle building is a wonderful futuristic structure with sleek curves inspired by the ripples of the ocean. It houses an impressive collection of contemporary Portuguese art. The suspended balcony gives you a stunning view of the whole of Lisbon. Lisbon Zoo Our next destination is the Lisbon Zoo, home to over 2,000 animals of over 300 species. It is not just a place where visitors see exotic animals, but also a conservation center for endangered species. Visit the Dolphin Bay where you can see the zoo's seven acrobatic dolphin shows. Take the cable car and ride high above the hippos, rhinos, lions, and tigers and enjoy its unique views of the exhibits. Unlike some other zoos, visitors are allowed to feed the animals so make sure to do that while you are here. Mercado da Ribeira A substantial part of any city's culture is the food. Mercado da Ribeira is Lisbon's main food market and established in 1892. The food hall section of the market has become a major food destination. It features stalls from top Portuguese chefs as well as different international food stalls. This is the best place in the city to explore different flavors and dishes. The seafood is a favorite among visitors so make sure to have some, since it is caught fresh daily. Upstairs is a concert hall which frequently hosts events and it is also a club. Carmo Convent Next is Carmo Convent, a former Catholic convent. It was destroyed during the 1755 Lisbon earthquake as well as most of the city and it stands as a reminder of the event. All that remains is the remains of the arches and the rubble from the roof that caved in during the earthquake. Surprisingly, 
Much of the art in the convent survived the earthquake and many artistic and cultural pieces remain. If you are here in the summer, you will find open-air concerts being held just outside the ruins. Commerce Square. Take a 10-minute walk to Commerce Square, Lisbon's main square. It was built on the site of the old royal palace before it was destroyed by the earthquake of 1755. It reflected the wealth of Portugal in the 18th century. It was where captains and merchants planned their sea voyages to trade in foreign countries. It features a bronze statue dedicated to King Joseph I at the entrance. It is the location of many cultural events, shows, and street performances but is also an important gathering point during rallies and protests. There are many restaurants and shops here, it is a really lively place to be. You can also get a great view of the Tagus River from here. St. George's Castle Next is St. George's Castle, which dates back to the 6th century. It has been occupied by various nations until it was captured by the Portuguese in 1147. It was later dedicated to St. George and it became the royal palace. At the main gate is a statue of King Afonso Henriques, the first king of Portugal and the one who led the capture of the castle. There is also a series of cannons to remind you of its original purpose. Much of it was destroyed during the earthquake of 1755 but it still includes an extension of walls and 18 towers. Climb the towers and you will be greeted by a breathtaking view of Lisbon and the sea. There is a garden with peacocks and geese where you can sit and relax. The peacocks have been known to chase after people so keep your distance. Lisbon Oceanarium. Lastly, we visit Lisbon Oceanarium. It is the world's largest saltwater oceanarium and has been called the best aquarium in the world. The oceanarium features over 450 species and about 25,000 creatures including sharks, rays, penguins, sea otters, and others. It features four marine habitats made to look like a single aquarium. So, you might see sharks apparently swimming with much smaller fish but they are actually separated by invisible acrylic walls. Visiting the oceanarium is like a deep-sea diving experience so be sure not to miss the experience. Tips for your day in Lisbon. Let's look at some helpful tips for your day trip to Lisbon. Best time to visit Lisbon. It is actually possible to travel to Lisbon all year round. However, the best time to visit Lisbon is during spring and autumn, especially during the months of April, May, and September to November. Surprisingly, it is chilly in the wintertime so dress accordingly. Book tickets in advance. It is important to get tickets in advance to avoid wasting time in lines mainly since we have limited time. Make sure to get the, skip the line, tickets if you can. The pass is also called Fast Track because it gives you fast access to Lisbon's main attractions. I will put a link in the description for more details. Wear comfortable shoes and get your legs in shape. Most of the city's attractions are within walking distance and Lisbon has a tricky terrain with the city's famous Seven Hills. So when visiting, make sure to wear comfortable shoes. Try to get your legs in shape before you to Lisbon. You will need it. To continue your travel journeys, click here. Now it's time to hear from you. What city have you tried to visit in only one day? Were you able to see a lot of it? Please like and subscribe to see more travel related videos. Happy travels and thanks for watching.